What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Y'all already know what today is, girl. What's up? Okay, let me turn this fan on because I'm about to sit here and die for y'all. Okay, what's up, y'all? Like, seriously, am I looking cute today or what? I got a little color in my face. But anyway, I hope y'all all having, like, a really great day today whenever y'all are watching this. Okay, girl, what's up? What's up? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? I gotta make sure I shout out everybody. What's up, YouTube fam? What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up, sister? What's up, brother? What's up, bro? Okay, what's up, broski? Okay, what's up, sis? Okay, what's up, everybody? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, fam? What's up? Your girl is back. A is back. So anyway, today is Monday, and you already know it's really Wednesday when y'all watching this, so I don't even know why I keep explaining that shit, but because I just like to tell y'all how my week was starting off, okay? So like I was saying, it's Monday, okay? And girl, I am over it already. Not over the week, but I'm just over certain shit up in this motherfucking house, okay? Excuse my pocket mouth but listen remember when i told y'all like forever ago like when i say forever ago i'm really talking like like some weeks and weeks ago like what was it like it's been like six weeks now okay or whatever but remember when i told y'all that they was working on my kitchen okay now remember i told y'all that it all started because the kitchen faucets stayed leaking like it'll be leaking they changed the faucet plenty of times they did the piping i'll be making sure everything is tight and tidy that's me muff the, the muff the fixer like i could fix some shit okay so i like to keep things up in my house like i'm not one of those women that just can't do shit i'll be fixing shit i'll be tightening up some pipes i'll be making sure everything is good to go but when i told them about the leaking faucet and that it wasn't even leaking from under the pipes because girl i get down under the sink and i investigate it was leaking from against the wall come to find out it was the faucet that they put in they took like over three weeks i think to come to my house it was about three weeks and the initial date that they were supposed to come then the guy never showed up so i had to call and complain and she sent somebody out the next day but mind you the appointment was three weeks out from the date i called so, you know, I had a bucket under there and I had some Easter baskets under there. Now, mind you, I told my daughter, Tati, no, I'm not throwing out these Easter baskets because I could reuse them for next Easter or for whatever. So I kept them under my kitchen sink. They came in handy, okay? Now, the drip wasn't that bad to where I had to change it constantly, but it was enough to where, you know what I'm saying, it was messing up the wood. Now, mind you, this was happening over the years. I kept having to have them come out like at least twice a year for my kitchen sink. The guy, he just never fixed it properly, okay? The one guy that came out. But anyway, they finally did the right thing, I guess. I don't even know because, girl, remember I told y'all I had to put in a plastic, they had to put in a plastic sink. One of those, um, you know, oh, excuse me, something's itching my nose. One of those travel size sinks. I mean, it's not even a travel size, but it's a plastic sink and you just hook up the legs. You can use it for like if you got a hair salon or whatever. But anyway, so I've been still using that sink. And remember, I had no cabinets, okay? They took all my cabinets. They took the cabinets that was on the side of it that didn't even connect. They took all of that, right? And they took all of that and left my kitchen in shambles. So I had to make like my own little fake counter because they wanted to give me this big ass folding table, this big ass picnic folding table that God knows where it was going to fit. It wasn't even high enough. But anyway, so I made my own little, you know, makeshift counter with my dishwasher and some plywood that I had because the bitch be building shit. OK, anyway, so it's been like six weeks and they finally brought my counters back in like I want to say like two and a half weeks ago. Still no countertop. The guy calls me and tells me that the guy who was making the new countertop quit. Decided he want to go do another job and quit. Okay, so now they send out somebody else to remeasure everything. And then this motherfucker is remeasuring all the counters that ain't even affected. So I'm like, why? And this was last week, okay? This was last Friday. I'm like, so mind you, it's been that long. I'm like, why are you re why are you measuring all my counters? And I didn't say it like that. I said, like, can I ask you something? He's like, sure. I said, why are you measuring all of my counters? Like, these are not affected. He goes and tells me that I'm going to get all new countertops because the counter that I originally had is discontinued. Like, they don't make that shit no more. Like, okay, so now y'all going to take even longer? Now, mind you, I ain't got no countertops, but I got my counter and my cabinet back, and I still got that plastic sink. Like, the plastic sink is now built. The cabinets are built around the plastic sink until they bring in my sink. Like, here go the newest shit. This ain't even got to do with the sink. I've been here for 11 years. And every effing year, kid you, no lie, there's something wrong with the central air. When I say there's something wrong with it, it, it builds up so much condensation and stuff that it starts leaking. And the 
the control part of the unit is upstairs in its own little closet. It's its own little dwelling, its own little closet. You can't put nothing else in there because that's made for it, okay? But it's also upstairs and it's over my laundry room, okay? So about four or five years ago, about four years ago, they came in and had to tear up the whole ceiling out of my laundry room. And it was like that for like a month. Okay. They took my cabinets off the wall. They like everything I had to remove it except for my deep freezer and my washing machine. You know what I'm saying? But I had no light in there. So I would have to go in with my, my phone light. Right. This was like four or five years ago because it kept leaking all the time. So it ate up the wood and it would have gave mold. Right. And when it, when it, when it fucking leaks. Okay. And the, because of the condensation, cause they're using these PVC piping inside. That's not even helping it. When it, it leaks in that closet it not only leaks from the ceiling into my laundry room but it also leaks through the floor on the rug right next to it on the floor girl so monday last monday monday night nay was like nay went into the laundry room i think she wouldn't need to go into the deep freezer right and she was like it's leaking and i was like are you kidding me so it was leaking in the doorway that's where it always starts right there in the door bridge and i i went and i put a bucket you know what i'm saying a bucket right there because it was just slowly and then the very next morning i called them and let them know like listen this ac is leaking not only did i have to she was like i'm gonna have somebody come out tomorrow Tomorrow, which was Wednesday, which would, would, would have been Wednesday. So then Tuesday, you know, Tuesday morning I call, Tuesday all day, it just kept leaking, but I'm not about to turn off my air conditioner because it's like 115 degrees outside and that's not about to happen. So I had the bucket, then I had to put another bucket, an Easter basket inside the laundry room because it started leaking again. By then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to turn the power off in the laundry room and um, where the light is at and I'm going to bring the cord out for my, um, you know, for my um, deep freezer into another room. I'm gonna just get a long extension cord, which I did, a power one because I didn't know if that water was going to go into the light fixture and start a fire or whatever. So that's what I did. Wednesday, the guy came, he had to rebuild like the piping and he had to put like the switch. So when the condensation is too much, it'll switch it off. And then I could go and like do something. And later on that day, the guys that been doing my kitchen, the same company called me like, we got to come through to see about the water damage. I'm like, what girl, wouldn't I tell you they came later on that Wednesday. Okay. They came Thursday morning, excuse me, after the air conditioner guy came on Wednesday. And they tore out my whole fucking ceiling once again in my laundry room, okay? And put these two big ass industrial fans in here, like huge. Like, they look like rug shampoos, but they're not. And they suck out water. It's so loud, okay? They tore out the ceiling. It's so effing loud. And then where it leaked all into the rug right here, into the hallway, they pulled up the carpet and they got the same two fans right there. Loud as fucking, I don't know what. And it's annoying. This has been going on in my house for days now, all weekend long. And I don't even know when they're coming back to get this shit, but it's it's gonna run up my electric bill and girl listen just start a GoFundMe, okay because i'm gonna need it for my electric bill just for real like this is what i've been enduring all weekend long it's been irritating and i'm so over this and i'm like okay you know what i've been here 11 years and they even said the, the guys that came out they said you were really like on top of your job with this ac because there's no mold and the water damage that it did was very little and you caught it. Normally people allow it to just keep dripping and will put up buckets, but you was really diligent or whatever he said in your job and calling and you stopped it from leaking, which was great because it's not even hardly damaged, but we still want to take this out and just make sure that it's just all dry. So we're just going to do it, redo it over. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I've been dealing with this all weekend, all week. I'm just like really, really over it, but you know, I just, that's, that's, that's what it is. I just want them to finish. I want them to finish the kitchen already. Out of hearing the noise. I'm tired of it. I'm tired. I'm just tired of it. Okay. That's been my week. But anyway, y'all see my lip combo for today. Now I look a little bit different than last week. Cause girl, I've been, I've been practicing. Okay. What I told y'all, Tati done got me more makeup, more makeup than came in. And I think it was on Thursday, 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 no, Thursday night, she went to CVS and bought more makeup for me, for my lips. And I think she was trying to basically really cheer me up because I was, was it Thursday night? It was either Wednesday or Thursday night. I think she was trying to cheer me up because remember I told y'all last week that I was having an issue with the AC in my car, right? And how I had spent all this money, $1,160 after certain repairs. Like first they said it was the condenser. Well, first I got a recharge and an oil change and AC maintenance that was like 400 and i think 60 dollars that i paid for all that because you know a recharge is like 250 dollars depending on where you go and an oil change cost me 80 dollars so you know and then I, I got ac maintenance but it still wasn't blowing cold so then i got a condenser 
put in my car a new condenser like right in the front and that was um 693 dollars total with the the labor and the part the the, the labor was 399 dollars and 88 cents 400 dollars more than the part okay then let me tell you he gave it back to me remember i said i was so happy it was cold that shit lasted for one fucking day and i had to turn around and spend another 380 dollars because it was the compressor then they put the compressor in my car they gave it back to me they said it was blowing so cold so when i go pick up my car you know what i'm saying and i'm driving it and i'm sitting at the school waiting for tinky to get out for 30 minutes i'm in the car i had to bring it back because that shit was blowing hot ass here it felt like somebody had turned the heat on it was like it's cold outside okay so i go back they had to keep my car for another day and a half and change out the compressor because the compressor that they put in there was not perfect for my car they had to put in a compressor that was like for a truck i wish y'all would have known that because my engine is a v8 why are y'all putting in some compressor that isn't but for a v6 engine like of course it's not going to be strong enough for my car anyway i ended up spending a total of one thousand five hundred and thirty three dollars for my ac they was like you got a whole new ac everything in your car yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that so i was kind of depressed about that only because i was excited and then i was disappointed and i was excited and then i was disappointed and then that's when i decided i'm just gonna have me an early drink and go take a nap and tati went out and bought makeup and i think she's trying to cheer me up but that's how my week was and i'm over it like seriously i'm fucking over it so i got some new lippies i tried out a new lip look today but i also got some color on my skin y'all you see you see that you see that so i'm try. i tried out this new she glam uh bronzing drop glow hero bronzing drops so i take it it only comes in one specific color which is fine but it gives you like a look that if you don't really want to put on foundation then you definitely do not have to which i was so stoked about like i was like yes because i really don't like to put on foundation all the time however i do have bronzing like i have this kevin a Kwan stuff it's called glass skin and it is like a bronzer but it's a little bit more oily than this which is great sometimes i have to dab off a lot more because it is very oily like like i guess that's what you want to describe it so this right here this bronzer right here is a really really sh like you know it's a really great color you don't need a lot depending on you i mean i who am i to tell you if you need a lot or not okay because who am i to tell you but i used it on my entire face and my chest area you know what I'm saying to give me some color because i was looking a little pale and like i said i don't really like to wear foundation all the time it's just too hot and i really don't like to like cover up my freckles like that because i'm proud of them finally but yeah so this is their newest like makeup as she glam and it is a bronzer a glow hero bronzer drop and um i've seen the girlies like of all different shades paler than me and darker than me using this and it's absolutely like look at it It goes on and it probably looks like a very light foundation but girl it rubs in and it gives you like this really nice color and i was like really really like happy about that like look at that now you look at them together and i got like a little bit of color right there right love it so i used a sponge to put mines on with but you know this is the hand that i used it on and this is the not hand but i used a sponge to apply it to my face and it gave me a little bit of color and i like that i like that a lot so guys go check this out because i thought this was really nifty and i really am pleased with it like i said i do have one by kevin aquan it's called glass skin and it does give you some color but it's not oil it's very very like i want to say it's very oily and sticky like i don't really like the feel of it so much but i will use it because it does give me like this nice glow and i think it's more about the glow versus in the glass look versus giving you a little bit of tint of color it doesn't really give you that much of a tint of color like this does and there really isn't any shade so i guess this shade is good for whoever it just gravitates to whatever complexion you are you know what i'm saying so if you're really really like pale then try this out but i like this like look at my hand color difference you can see that it's not like a huge difference but it's a difference enough baby okay it's a difference enough so this video is being sponsored today by she glam where you can get all the affordable makeup and look super duper demure cutesy and mindful on a budget okay girl i just figured i'd throw that in there since everybody is using that but yeah i really do like this and i use that today along with some of their blush and here i am this is it and my new lippy so yeah i'm trying out new lippies I'm, girl listen i'm i'm getting there i'm getting there i'm getting there okay but anyway other than that my weekend was just great you know i didn't really do much of anything but chill watch 
some television, mind my business. My little grandson came over to visit my youngest one, the newest one, only him because my other grandson was at a birthday party. So my daughter-in-law and the last two grandsons will be leaving on the 13th or 14th of September to go to Georgia, which is great for her and the kids. And if I forgot to tell you her job that she works now, that she's been working at for her past like year and a half, she works for a, um, a tow company, I guess you want to, well, they tow cars. They also auction cars off. They also do collision damage. So they do a lot of things there. So she's been working there and they love her and she got a transfer. I, I don't remember if I told you guys this, but I'll tell you real quick. She got a transfer to Georgia, but the transfer was an hour away from her actual home. So they allowed her to re work, work remote. So that's a good thing. And my other two grandsons, they're loving it. They love the schooling down there. They sent me videos of them at church reciting prayer, which I was so happy about. Super duper happy about that. Like they really do love church and that's great. Every Everyone needs some type of belief, strong religious belief in their life. I don't care what you do or what you believe in, but believe in something that gives you faith and gives you like, you know, just motivation. So they're doing that. But other than that, you guys, you know, it's good. It's good to see to you guys. It's been, I've been rambling enough. So we're just going to jump into this real talk. So if you got a real talk that you want me to talk about, girl, just go ahead and send me an email to my, it's my lovers2012 at gmail.com. Or you can use April's Real Talk at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line Real Talk so that way when it's time for me to open it or I have to search it up, I can just type in Real Talk and that's what it's about. If you want to change the name of the people that you're talking about in your email, then you can go ahead and do so and let me know so. If you don't want to, then that's fine. You don't need to. But either way, we're going to jump into this Real Talk and make sure you check out my website. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Goingwiththewindwigs.weebly.com. I will also post that down below where you can get all the low price high-end brand lace front wigs full closure wigs wigs in general and also you can get yourself some really really cute arm candy so with that being said let's just jump into this real talk All right, you guys. So this is labeled Real Talk Fast Money. Fast money, honey. Fast money, honey. Fast money. Hey, April. How's it going? How's everyone? Hello, divas and divos. My name is Audrey, and I am 46 years old. Sis, I have been with the same man since we were in our early 20s, 22 to be exact. We have several kids together, a home in New Jersey, etc. I am, I am, yes, married to this man. Here's my story. My husband and I got married in the prison system. You know, he was incarcerated when we got married. He and I were both 27 at the time. This is how we ended up having our first child because once married, we can have private visits where I could stay for the weekend with him in a trailer. Anyway, my husband was locked up due to the drug game and he did a few years and came out and eventually went back to jail again due to the same nonsense. Now he's been out of jail for some years now and we love each other hard, girl, strong. I'm his ride or die and wouldn't want to be with anyone other than him. But he has recently started talking about making money, getting money, getting to the bag, trying to get ahead so our lives could be smooth sailing. April, he doesn't want to admit to me what he's referring to, but I'm no dumb ass. I know exactly what he's referencing. I work a full-time job where I bring in plenty of overtime due to the field of work in which I work is medical field. My husband works in a warehouse for Amazon and has been for several years. He's always complaining about the pay, saying it's not enough and he wants better. But how can you want something if you're not going to go that hard for it? I tell him time and time again to go apply for different jobs, such as construction as he took these trades up in prison and received and received certificates and awards for his work. 
He knows how to do all these things, but doesn't seem like he wants it that bad if he ain't trying to set up a job interview for one. April, I'm 46 and ain't getting no younger. Honey, I'm ready to retire or at least take a nice vacation for a few months because I feel so burnt out. And then to hear this nonsense from him has got me feeling like, girl, I'm going to be working until I'm in my 70s because this man going to do something to fuck up my shit. Don't get me wrong, I love him to pieces, but there comes a time when a person must grow up and I don't know if it's me that needs to do the growing and walk away from this toxic shit or is it him? I understand everyone wants to live the good smooth sailing life. Who don't? But we are not all handed that in the cards. We are dealt. So we have to be adults and adult. I'm tired of this street talk he's giving me and I'm ready to tell him about himself because it isn't the life I want to live. Thank you in advance, Audrey. Ooh, girl. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I hate about putting the lip combo together and all the work that you do to put it together? When you get thirsty and you want to drink your agua, it just comes right off. Like, I did all that work to look cute for you guys and yeah. Anyway, so we got a 46 year old Audrey who has been married, or excuse me, who has been with the same person since they were in their early 20s, okay? Uh, 22. So that has 24 years. They've been together for 24 years. That's a nice amount of time. You know what I'm saying? I love to see people together for a lengthy of time. You know, I love to see elderly people out in public, like elderly marriage couples, and you see them. I've, I've, I've had the audacity to ask before because if you smile at me and I smile back at you and we, 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 we you know, we exchange hellos or we just exchange smiles, I... I'm not invested, but I'm kind of invested. So I do ask them, you know, I've, have, I've asked, how long have you guys been together? And I've heard people tell me, 60 years, honey, it'll be 50 years. And you know, it's like, wow, that's a beautiful thing to see and hear that people have been together for so long. Because it just is, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes things don't last. And I love to hear about people being together for so long. You know what I'm saying? So they've been together, or she's been with her husband for 24 years and that's a beautiful blessing it's a blessing but during those 24 years her husband has been in the prison system okay i don't know how long but he's been in here long enough because like she said they got married while he was incarcerated so she can get those visits you know those um what do they call i can't remember those visits but i don't think they give those visits anymore to married people um because they just don't and, and in my opinion i'm sorry and i might sound mean for saying this but just because you married don't mean that you get a trailer to go fuck your husband on the weekends or, the, or during the month. That's not, that's a privilege. Like, I don't think that anybody deserves that. I'm sorry. I've never had the opportunity to do that with my ex-husband when he was in prison. But, and, and you know what though? I wouldn't have wanted to because I'm not about to be locked in nobody's fucking um, mobile trailer with an inmate and y'all, no. No, I don't want to be locked in. That's really, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure you can leave when you want to. Like, hey, call up and be like, get me out of here. But I just really don't want to go through that. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like this. Like, you did the crime, so now you could do the time. And I'm not about to marry you, or I'm not about to come in and pull my drawers down just so you could get a piece and get your rocks off. I just feel like that's extra. And I don't really think they do those things anymore. Conjugal, conjugal visits. I don't think they do that anymore. I mean, listen. Some people probably gonna get mad because I said that it, it's it's not needed, but it's not. It's not needed. Like I don't think that prisoners should get those privileges of getting pussy when when they want to. Like no, the fuck. But anyway, so Audrey and her husband, you know what I'm saying? They he's been in and out of the prison system because he went back and came back out. And this is all because of the D game. And I don't mean the D game like his, you know what, his penis game. I'm talking about the illegal D game, okay? Where it's fast money, like she said, okay? Now, they are 46. They damn near 50. Let's round them off to 50, okay? Now, she got her husband. She work in the um, medical field, and her husband work in an Amazon warehouse. But he's complaining about how he wants to make more money. He need more money. He want their lives to be smooth sailing, you know what I'm saying? But he ain't really putting in no hard work to get a better job. But she knows exactly what the fuck he talking about. He talking about getting to the bag, okay? You know what people talk about getting to the bag? They gonna do some shit that they ain't got no business doing, okay? Like getting to the bag. I don't know why people always say getting to to the bag there's no s at the end of the word bag if i'm going to do something where i want to get to some money i'm gonna need that bag to have an s at the end of it i'm gonna need it to be a plural i'm gonna need to get to the bags because one bag ain't gonna suffice i don't know about y'all but i got bills to pay and i don't want to be back out and at it again trying to get to the bag again i'm gonna need to get several bags so a bitch can retire and do nothing with her life okay straight up but 
I like to get to the bags uh, the legal way. I ain't trying to be looking over my shoulder while I got the bags. Like, nah, I'm not about to do that, okay? I ain't about to do that. So Audrey is basically fed up. Like, she is fed up. She said that she she ready to take a long-needed vacation because she has been working her ass off. And now she feel like because her husband keeps talking this bullshit that she's going to have to be working until she's 70. So she feel like he's going to fuck her shit up. And she loving the pieces, but she tired of this nonsense. And she said everybody wants to live the good, smooth sailing life. But sometimes our cards are not dealt like that. And that's exactly it. She's tired of the street talk and that he's giving her. And people need to grow up. Girl, motherfuckers been needed to grow up. I don't know where you've been at, Audrey, but motherfuckers been needed to grow up, boo. But here's the thing. I would be tired of that shit, too. I'm going to be honest with you. I got tired of that shit, too. I got tired of that same shit, too. And you know, my ex-husband was part of that, sh that lifestyle, too. And it gets to be, you know what? After a while, it's like, grow the fuck up grow up because all you're going to do is end up back in that same fucking position which is with your hands behind your back cuffed together and some shackles on your feet getting escorted to the fucking bus take you to your new home where you're going to be residing at for a few years okay that shit is played the fuck out and when you get to a certain age like my age and her age honey you need to leave that to the youngsters and i really say it like that because you have no business being in the game at that age okay and i i really don't even say leave it to the young Youngsters. I mean, I do say that because you, when you old that age, then you need to leave that shit to the youngsters. But in reality, everybody needs to leave that shit the fuck alone. But it's sad because here it is. Like she just said, he's got certificates in construction being a, in that trade why not put that shit to use so you just took those classes because you was in prison because you just wanted to pass the time i understand people do shit to pass the time but girl or guys use what you have achieved wherever the fuck it was at in your real life if you got a certificate and awards putting shit together welding shit constructing shit building shit then put that shit into your real life use that shit because that type of game that you want to do to be chasing the bag is a game that is like it's not even worth it. It's not worth your time and your effort and your, your energy. It's really, really not. The money is fast money. It truly is. It definitely is. But is fast money always good money? I say this. Like, if I would have known what I knew now versus what I knew then, I definitely would have really appreciated, like, my older self coming and visiting me and telling me, girl, get yourself out of this lifestyle. Get yourself to the real bag the right way you know what i'm saying like i would have been told myself to get away from that to get away from that lifestyle to get away from it in general if i knew what i knew now today you know i'm 50 years old so back then like many many years and many many moons ago you know what i'm saying i my life was totally different and i just say i wish that i knew what i knew now I wish I knew it then, but it's unfortunate. Sometimes people don't even get to get out of the game as a whole. And when I say as a whole, like you don't get to get out of the game alive. You don't get to get out of the game free. Sometimes you might end up spending your life in jail. You might even lose everything you have, your family, your friends, everything that you've accumulated and worked so hard for in your life. In the game, you might lose everything. And so it's just definitely not worth it. And especially when you are an older person in your 40s, in your late 20s, I would think that you should know better by then, be more a little bit more mature. Sometimes people in their early 20s don't really know too much. They're not really mature. And I'll be the first one to admit that because I damn sure wasn't. Like I said, I wish I would have known then what I know now. However, when you're in your 40s, baby, you should definitely be mature enough to know, like, this is not my lifestyle. What I have learned and what I have achieved is what I should use towards my life that I want to live now. Who doesn't want a smooth sailing life? I don't never hear people go around and say, oh, girl, I want to just struggle. I want to have a hard life. I love it when it's a hard like I just want to struggle nobody says that so I'm I'm pretty sure that everybody wants a smooth sailing lifestyle right like everybody wants to have a calm life everybody wants to have a life where they really don't have to do much everybody wants to have a life where it's just smooth sailing and it's easy going for them because I don't really know anybody who wants to struggle but some people just don't have the willpower or the oomph to just get it going some people feel like the game life is much easier than the work life. And I'm going to just be honest and tell you this. I work a nine to five any day before I was to be out in the streets selling the D. Oh, hell yeah. I would definitely work a nine to five because it's got to be definitely hard. OK, I know it is. OK, because I've been there. I know it is. It's harder looking over your shoulder 
making sure that the man ain't coming and, and, and arresting you, outrunning them, trying to outrun them because they just caught you doing some shit you ain't had no business doing, okay? Or dodging pew pews and bullets and shit like that. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. I don't know about you guys, but I, me personally, April, I'd rather work a nine to five. I'd rather go clock in at somebody's job versus stand on a street corner or any type of bullshit nonsense that has to do with the D game versus... Yeah, I, I'd rather go work a nine to five job, okay? And have to save my money. That's just what I would do. But you know, some people don't feel that way. And it's unfortunate, but Audrey's husband doesn't. So now she's trying to figure out basically what should she do? Should she walk away? Cause she said, sometimes people gotta be grown and, gr and growing. Um, and he don't seem like he's growing, honey. So I'm not here to tell nobody what to do with their life and their marriage. But if it were me, cause I've already been through this. Oh, I've already been through this. I put my motherfucking foot down and I would say what I have to say. And see, here's the thing. What which a lot of people don't fail to realize after your husband has gone in and out of prison enough times you get numb to that shit and then you don't even really want to deal with them and so all of that love and that um anxiety or that um that 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 energy that you had to do things for them while they were incarcerated you don't get that anymore after like several trips to the incarceration destination you don't feel like that anymore about sending them packages going on visits and shit like that like people don't feel like that anymore people don't feel like they should have to keep doing shit like that it gets old and played out after a while you know what i'm saying visiting anybody in jail gets old and played out after a while let me tell you, I have been to enough jails in my lifetime, okay? And I'm not just saying from with my ex-husband, but you know, I, I like those thugs. I did used to like dating thugs, those that had a number behind their name. I used to like to date guys like that because that was my lifestyle. So that's what I was used to. But that shit gets old and played out. And when I tell you I've been to enough jail visits, but that's something that was in my past and I would love to leave it there and not relive it ever again. So Audrey, if it were me and he was talking about that nonsense, I would give him an ultimatum. That would be me. Now I'm not saying do what I do because it might not work out in your favor. He might just say, well, I'm just gonna go ahead with this V-game and leave you alone. But you know what? If he chooses that over you, then you know where you stand as a person, a woman, and the love of his life and his wife. And that means that gives you the initiative to do what's best for you and your children now, i'm pretty sure her children are grown by now because she did say yeah she did say she was 22 so 24 years of marriage yes her kids are grown the first one is i don't know about the other ones following and i don't know how many kids but she said several but I would definitely give an ultimatum like I'm and it's not even an ultimatum it's this is what the fuck I'm gonna do if this is what you do I'm not telling you to choose nobody but I'm telling you what I'm gonna do is what I'm gonna tell you you know what I'm saying after a while shit gets old and played out and it's like man grow the fuck up and you're right grow up because when are you gonna grow up you damn near 50 46 round it off 46 is closer to 50 right or wrong you know what i'm saying but at a certain age you do get tired and overwhelmed with dumb shit and i'll be the first to tell you i get overwhelmed with dumb shit i don't really want to partake in any dumb shit i don't want any dumb shit to be part of my life and if we are married and you are readily wanting to bring in dumb shit and our lives on purpose purposely i gotta leave you the fuck alone and it sucks because we've been married for 24 years but time is a beautiful blessing when you've been with somebody for so long it's a beautiful blessing however just because you've been with someone for so long doesn't mean you have to stay with them because if they're bringing in toxic unhealthy negative drama and lifestyle living into your life then it's not a good thing. And who wants that? Nobody wants to have an unhealthy life. However, there are some people that love drama and they don't give a fuck and it, it gets their fuels going and that's fine. That's their lives. But there are women like Audrey because I can tell she don't want to be a part of that shit. She in the medical field. And let's just think about it like this, Audrey. You are in the medical field. What your husband wants to do can mess up your whole entire career. And granted, you want your career to be over soon. You want to retire soon. But you still don't want anybody to ruin anything that you worked hard for in your life. Okay, whether it be the house that you live in, the things that you've done to, uh, to achieve in your life. You don't want anybody to ruin it, okay, with one bad, one bad thing. And that's just what it is. So if it were me and my husband kept talking to me about all of this bullshit about, you know, I would let him know, listen, if this is what I'm going to do. If not, and, and this is what it is. And he can either respect it or not respect it. But either way, you're going to respect it. You either going to respect it and do the right thing. Or you going to respect it and move on with your life. But I just feel like people really don't learn after some people 
don't sometimes people just don't seem to learn and you may think that they don't seem to learn and i may think that they don't seem to learn but in reality they have that's just that person that's who they are so when we're sitting here like oh they ain't learned a lesson they ain't learned a lesson they've been to jail two times they ain't learned a lesson if that were me i would have did it this way if that were me i would be going back just like i said to y'all i've been to jail okay spent two weeks there and i never went back because that wasn't for me same way like i'm saying oh if i would have did this different i wouldn't be back there some people it just isn't their nature that's just them as a person so we may feel like we growing and we may feel like this is toxic and we may feel like they not growing but mentally they are them that is them this is the person who they are can't change a person you just either got to accept it or move on and Audrey I'm gonna just tell you this if it were me and I was in the medical field and I was damn near 50 which you are okay I would I would let him know like listen this is my life nobody wants to live their life to where they don't know if their doors are gonna be kicked in or if the feds are gonna be watching them or if the feds got their names on documents nobody wants to live their life like that okay especially at this grown ass age where you can have grandchildren any day now we don't want to live our life like that however if you choose to i feel like if a person does choose to live their life like that then you need to respect the fact that the person that you may be with at the time doesn't therefore you either need to move forward with your life and leave that person alone but don't put them in harm's way and don't jeopardize nothing that they got me personally i think your husband needs to grow the fuck up and i think he needs to take his certificates and all the things that he's worked hard for in prison and achieved and he needs to use that in his daily real everyday life and get himself a better job you live in New Jersey. There's plenty of construction sites in New Jersey, New York. You know what I'm saying? In the surrounding areas. I feel like he really needs to put his work ethics to work and get ahead of himself. Staying stuck at Amazon is not the way to go. Working at Amazon, it's, it's fine. You can have a career wherever you want, but it's what you do with it. And getting to the bag is not like a flex. Like, I'm sorry, but I don't never want to say I'm getting to the bag. Because how much is in a bag, okay? I mean, I'm saying if, it, if there's a million dollars up in that motherfucker, then we could keep that. At, at bag but still people a million i'd like to have more than a million you know what i'm saying give me two million so i'm still need to get to the bags plural i told y'all this before put an s at the end of it because a bag ain't enough all right but y'all let audrey know what y'all would do in this situation me personally i'm gonna tell him what the fuck i'm gonna do and if he doesn't like it then he could carry on because that's what he's going to do anyway. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to tell people what we're about to do just so to see what they're about to do. And sometimes what we're about to tell you, what we're about to do, may put you in the right headspace to be like, oh, okay, I'm about to do that. So the next email we're going to move on oh, to. She, is, she, 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 she titled this Real Talk. Our relationship is a war zone. Hi, April. I've been watching your video since New York. And let me just say, Mumsy was a cute toddler just a second ago. I can't believe she's all grown and a beautiful, long, a beautiful young lady now. Plus, I remember your special furniture for jewelry in your old house. We used to smoke together, Diva. Okay, I don't really know what she means by that. Oh, probably because when I used to do real talk, I would smoke cigarettes. So I guess that's what she's meaning. Let me introduce myself. My name is... A Eliza, I hope I grow up. I'm pronouncing wrong. I apologize. Let me introduce myself. My name is Eliza and I am 35 years old and Jewish. My fiance's name is Abby, 34, and he's an Arab. I told you our background, not because we are religious, not at all, but to show you where we come from traditionally. Our families are both very religious. Let's say that even orthodox. They don't approve of our relationship from the beginning. We met in the park when he was a student and I was working in a big PR agency. My parents who moved to the U.S. from Israel were skeptical from the start. And Arab, they are so dirty, said my mother and my father always warned me. His family will never accept you, Eliza. Abi's family, who came to New York from Palestine when he was a child, had a similar reaction. His mother always told Abi, think about our traditions and our religion. Allah is not going to bless your marriage. Despite everything, we tried to keep our relationship strong. We avoided discussing politics or religion with our families. We love to travel the world to party, meeting new people, etc. We rarely even visited them, but called home from time to time. We lived in a happy bubble. We propo he proposed in Paris in 2021, and we moved in together in our tiny apartment in Brooklyn. But then the news of the Israel-Palestine conflict dominated every conversation. My parents grew more anxious. They were calling Abi's family terrorists, and they were called child murderers. Me and Abi became distant. I watched everything about the war in the news, and he was scrolling the IG to find more info. We tried everything, reading about this conflict, talking to other couples like us, even therapy. 
In the beginning, therapy seemed like it might have worked. The therapist encouraged us to express our feelings openly, to talk about our fears and frustrations without judgment. For a while, it felt like we were making progress. We talked about our families, the war, and the future of us as a married couple. But even in therapy, the same issues kept surfacing. I struggled with the guilt my parents had laid on me, the fear that by loving Abby, I was turning my back on my people. Abby was haunted by the voices of his family, their grief and anger, a constant reminder of the war in Gaza. The sessions became harder, more draining. Instead of bringing us closer, the process of unpacking our emotions seemed to drive us further apart. So painful. I feel like sometimes we argued just like our parents, not like ourselves. We decided that therapy was not for us and tried traveling for a while, but it was hard not to see what was going on in Gaza because the news are available everywhere. Just open TikTok app and see more videos against Israel. I just want this to end. I don't want to be called a murderer just for being Israeli, like he doesn't want to be called a terrorist by my family. Dear April and Divas, please help me. What would you do? I love Abi so much and I want to marry him, but is there a peaceful future for us? I feel like I'm in a movie that's not going to end happily. With love, Al 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 Eliza? Oh, I hope I pronounced her name correctly. I think her name is pronounced Eliza. I do, I do hope so. And I hope I'm pronouncing her fiance Abby's name properly. Okay, because y'all know I will fuck up a name. So basically we have Eliza here, who is 35 years old. She lives in Brooklyn, New York, okay? And she is Jewish. And her, her fiance, he is um, an Arab, an Arab, Arabic, I guess. Arab, right, yes. So her family's, her, her family is Orthodox Jews. And so they really don't approve of her being with any other but her own. And I'm pretty sure Abby's family is feeling the same way. So let me tell y'all, first of all, I have seen so many different news clips and seen so many different stories about the war that's going on. And it's so disheartening that a lot of times I just don't keep up on it just because I just don't like all the fighting. And I'm this type of person. I don't really care what your religion is, where you're from, what your background is. I just feel like as a person, as a human being, I feel like we all need to learn to respect one another and to learn to get along and learn to disagree and agree. You know what I'm saying? With one another. Learn how to agree to disagree. That's it and learn how to get along and treat another human being the same way that you would want to be treated and i feel like this about any kind of culture any type of background any type of race you know what i'm saying i just feel like this so there's a lot of things that she said in this which is so disheartening and even honestly i feel like even if it wasn't a war going on people certain religions and backgrounds will always stop them from being with the person that they want to be with and that may not necessarily be that person but you can always tell when an older person is very religious they don't want that younger generation to be outside of what their religion entails you understand what i'm saying so with eliza's um family members being that they are orthodox jews you know jewish people and Arabic people, they always had like a clash thing. And I don't want to always say always because I don't really want to get into the war because I am no news reporter and I'm not there. But I just feel like as a human being, I feel like any living person, any living being should be treated with respect. And that goes with, for it to say living being. It doesn't have to always mean human. It could be animals as well because they are living. And I just feel like me personally, every living being deserves respect despite regardless of your background and where you've come from every living being deserves respect now there are older generations that just feel like if you are not xyz then you should not be with abc you know what i'm saying and i didn't really want to use a different religion as an example so that's why i said if you are xyz you should not be messing with abc that's just how some people are and it's unfortunate because there are families that will definitely deter those that are happily together from being with one another so you got eliza excuse me who's xyz and abby who's abc and their families are at a clash they're like rah, 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 you know what i'm saying and it's kind of making their whole relationship dissolve unfortunately and you know what eliza i'm gonna say this and i said this last week about social media a lot of times social media and the news 
are lies and it just can ruin your whole life. And this is a prime example. Even though they do want to find out what's going on with their hometowns and they do want to find out what's going on with their people and where they live at, there's nothing wrong with wanting to know this. But we cannot allow social media and the news and what other people are doing interfere with our lives in the way that we live our lives. There was a time basically when interracial dating or marriages was very shunned upon. And till, still to this day, there are. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not even front and act like, oh, interrelation, interracial relationships or marriages is not shunned upon because it is. It may not be so openly like it used to be back, 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 back in the days, but it's kind of like the same thing. XYZ and ABC is like an interracial dating thing, okay? And so if they allow, if these interracial daters allowed all the people that's outside of their lives interfere, they would have never got married. They would have never been a bunch of little mixed children running around. You know what I'm saying? Like myself, there would have been none of this. So I say this because I get it. XYZ and ABC, some people don't agree. Okay. But here's my thing. If you are XYZ and Abby is ABC and y'all both agree, y'all should not allow nobody that's back here get up here with y'all. And I get that's your mom and your dad and your family members. And sometimes, you know what? You just gotta let one thing go in one ear and come out the other. And it's out of respect. My kids are all in interracial relationships and I'm okay with that because they're human beings and as long as you're respectable I don't give a damn what color or race or what kind of background you came from you know what I'm saying I, when I say what I, background you came from I mean like what country or things like that I don't mean like oh well he came from a background where they just shoot up everybody now nah, I ain't talking about like that okay I'm talking about like background as in what country you came from okay you know it's just really unfortunate to see people at odds with one another and when you see people at odds with one another, it just sucks when you even see those odds that are outside, kind of outside of your marriage or your relationship come into your home. Now, I'm not saying that they are outside of their life because this is their life. They, they want to check up on and they want to see what's going on in the world. They want to see what's happening. But like I said about social media, we sometimes let that consume our lives and we sometimes let that interfere with our lives. And I understand that we have a strong bond to home and to our people and to our families. But we sometimes have to learn when not to allow certain things to interfere with our lives. Now, like I said, you can allow what your mom and your father or your family say you can you you can listen you can definitely listen and let it go through your ear don't allow it to marinate to where you and your spouse are clashing with one another or fighting or at odds with one another I really feel like this even though you both are from different cultures and different backgrounds I'm pretty sure that you all everyone believes in one God excuse me not one God but I'm sure that you all believe in one thing that's the same faith and those at the high above, okay, the most high. And uh, each person may call the most high something different, and that's okay, but we all believe in a faith. It may not be the same exact faith, but we all believe in a faith, and that's what we have in common. And now, maybe how he prays, you may not pray, but I feel like this, for you two, pray for one another. Pray, pray for each other's home. Pray for your home. Pray for Abby's home. Pray for his family. Pray for your family. You cannot allow the immaturity of his family to interfere with your life, plus your family's immaturity to um, interfere with his life and your life. You know, I'm not really versed in this because I don't, you know, like I said, I'm not like keeping up on all that is going on because it's just very disheartening to see people at odds especially in this this time of life like it's been so much that has already gone on with one another in life in general that we had to kind of like come together you know what i'm saying like we on earth had like this horrible virus that was going on you know what i'm saying it's still a thing but we still had to come together to help figure out how to end this horrible virus or how to help one another through this time and and it's sad because now we have this going on and it's like can I hate to say this but like can we all just get along you know remember that old saying can we all just get along but it's true it's like so true and it's, it just feels like it's overused but it's not really overused because nobody is doing it like nobody's just getting along with anyone nobody's just going on with their merry day nobody is just doing that and it's like do we still have to constantly say this is the word really overused or is it not because i don't see anybody like getting along it sucks when you can see different cultures different backgrounds different race different ethnicity going through shit and fighting and being at 
odds with one another when we all live on the same damn planet together as one person. Like, seriously. I could see if you lived on a whole different planet and you know what I'm saying? I could understand that. I would better understand it. But we all live on the same one planet and we all get the same amount of outcome. We got clouds, we got a sky, we got rain, we got sleep, we got snow, we got sun. We all are experiencing the same life things. And it sucks when we can have all these different cultures and backgrounds and countries just at odds with one another. And for what? Like seriously, for what? Sometimes it could be greed. It's like the most silliest things when you think about it. Like you really want to fight and end people's lives over something so minute. And I call it minute because your life, his life, her life, everybody's life is way worthy, more worthy than anything else, okay? I'm just happy every day to wake up and be breathing. I don't even care about anything else. I'm just happy to be awoke every morning and be able to breathe. That's a blessing to me. So all of these other little trends or things that people are arguing over or fighting over, it really doesn't move me like that because I'm just happy to wake up. And it's sad because it's, people need to realize like, yo, I woke up above ground. Thank God. Thank whoever you thanking, but be blessed and be thankful and grateful for that. And it just hurts. It's so disheartening to see other countries and other people, wherever you from, just at odds with one another over nothing when you at the end of the day when it boils down to it it's really nothing because your life is so much more important than anything else in this world as a human being as a living being we all have something to offer i don't give a fuck what you don't have or what you do have everybody has something to offer okay including other living beings in this world that we live and it just sucks when you see people at odds and let me tell you something eliza and i do hope that i'm pronouncing your name properly your family they may be going through something and they are older and you have to realize that older people like my mom too, they be setting their ways. And even myself, I'm going to be older, older one day and I am set in my ways. OK, that's OK. But sometimes we, the younger generation that's underneath those older, we have to just learn to be respectful listen and keep it pushing we should not allow certain people's dictations certain people's lives to interfere with our lives and it's sad that you and your fiance are feeling like this and you're feeling like your marriage or your relationship is not going to end in a happy one but i'm here to tell you that it can as long as you don't allow social media and the news to interfere with your life we understand that what's going on in your countries is devastation but you also need to understand the both of you that you, neither you nor abby are the ones partaking in this devastation. And that's what you need to transmit to one another. That's what you need to talk to each other about. I understand that in our countries are at war and our country is at odds, but that's not you and that's not me. We are here and we are together and we are one of these people in a relationship that are beating the odds. May not be over there that are beating the odds, but you still beating the odds because y'all are still together and you not allowing others to interfere. However, you are semi allowing others to interfere, but I'm here to tell you to stop allowing others to interfere in your life and to carry on and realize that even though your countries are at war with one another, you two are not. Let's not allow that over there to get us to be like that. That's all you got to do. And just pray. Pray for each other's countries. Pray for each other's families. And don't allow it to interfere. I would think like this, to be honest, don't discuss it with each other. I, I really feel like that. Like sometimes you got to just put a boundary on shit and just don't discuss it. Because if you see that it's going to destroy or ruin you, I wouldn't discuss it with one another. I, I do. I do. I do apologize for not knowing so much of what's going on but i do know enough um i like i said i just don't like to watch it a lot because the news and lies and i've seen like clips and they were just so disheartening you know what i'm saying like i pray for everybody when i go to sleep at night when i talk to god every morning when i talk to father god every day i don't just pray for my country i don't i don't just pray for my friends i don't just pray for my family i say to every living being to him 
And when I say every living being, I mean everything that's living, human or non-human, every living being, because that's just me. I want everybody to be okay. I want everybody to be all right. And I want everybody to do right. Is it going to happen like that? No, it's not. But I'm just saying, I just make sure to pray for every country, everybody. And it's just disheartening to see anybody doing any harm to any person, regardless of where it's at, what's going on. I don't like to see anybody being harmed, regardless of what it is, because it's inhumane. It's, it's, it's not right. Okay. We are all here for a purpose. We all have a purpose. And I feel like, you know what I'm saying, we have to uplift one another. And it's sad because a lot of people just don't. And I just don't understand why. And some people may feel like, oh, I might I might be a little naive for not understanding why. Or maybe I'm naive because I want everybody to just do the right thing and get along. But that's just what it is. I'm not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm not a very, I'm not a negative person. Like, I can be negative at times. But for the most part, I just want peace. Peace with everything. Like, not just world peace, but just peace. You know what I'm saying? Peace with neighbors, peace with people, peace, peace, just peace. There's nothing wrong with peace. OK, and people don't realize like life would be so much easier if you just would allow peace to take over. But yeah, Eliza, I would definitely try not to speak upon it. And please don't allow others to interfere. Let Liza, Eliza know what your part of what your feelings are on her email that was sent to me, how you would handle it. And what you do to not allow people to interfere in your day-to-day -day life. You know what I'm saying? So I love you guys. I'm going to go and head out. I will definitely see y'all in the next one. A girl's hungry. But Gerada made me some spaghetti over the weekend. And I'm about to go eat that. Okay? I'm about to have me a nice meal and enjoy. But I love y'all. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you comment below and like the video. When you come in this, motherfucker. Well, you already came in. But before you leave, make sure you hit the likey like. Okay? Because it's free and it don't cost you nothing. Like, for real. Just, just hit that. Shit. I love y'all.